Crisis response is the immediate mobilization of EU resources to deal with the consequences of crises across the globe, while at the same time acknowledging their growing, multi-dimensional character, which requires a comprehensive solution. The role that was created that I embody was three jobs, in a sense, pushed into one. But its main purpose was to try and get the European Union to be able to develop the breadth of a foreign policy, security and defence strategy that also encompassed within it development, trade and economic life in general. In other words, what we call in Europe the comprehensive approach. From prevention and preparedness to response and recovery, the EU has the tools to achieve a swift and comprehensive crisis response and management capability. But for this to happen, a crisis response system must be in place, so as to enhance coherence between the various aspects of crisis response and management measures, in particular in the security, political, diplomatic, consular, humanitarian and developmental fields. Stabilizing fragile countries emerging from crisis require the mobilization of all our instruments, diplomatic, military, security, development, humanitarian. All of this to be used in a coordinated and synergic manner. That means in a comprehensive way. Our job is to turn the comprehensive approach into comprehensive action. The EU crisis platform is one of the main tools which can be convened on an ad hoc basis to facilitate swift and comprehensive EU response to external crises. The platform is chaired either by the EU High Representative Commission Vice President, the EAS Executive Secretary General or the Managing Director for the Geographical Department together with the Managing Director for Crisis Response and Operational Coordination. The platform provides the EAS and the Commission with clear political and strategic guidance for the management of a given crisis. On a case-by-case -case basis, the crisis platform can bring together various EAS crisis response and management structures such as the Crisis Management and Planning Directorate, the EU Military Staff and the EU Military Committee Chair, the Civilian Planning and Conduct Capability, ENSEN, as well as relevant geographical EAS units, and European Commission services, in particular ECHO, DEFCO, HOME, FBI. When a major crisis erupts somewhere in the world, we need to be thinking first what the problem is, and second, what the most effective solution for the specific problem is. The European Union delegation are key players in shaping target action and we are here to support them in being more effective. The EEAS Crisis Response Department works at headquarters level to bring services together and at field level on bottom-up approaches. It provides expertise to support a range of stabilization processes such as reconciliation, economic recovery, the relaunch of basic services or security. It helps translating the political priorities as set by the geographical department and the member states into tangible actions on the ground. In Mali, following the convening of two crisis platforms in 2013, the Crisis Response Department compiled an options paper together with all relevant services from the EEAS and the Commission. The paper was presented by the Executive Secretary General Vimont to the Political and Security Committee and a few days later our department coordinated the deployment of an inter-service mission to Bamako. On the 28th of January, the mission arrived in the capital and started working on detailing the options ranging from the feasibility of a support to the Malian budget to the acceleration of the EU military training mission deployment and to a short-term stabilization package supporting the presence of the state throughout the country and the promotion of peace and reconciliation initiatives. In Somalia, the Crisis Response Department carried out identification work to support the newly accessible areas and also fostered the establishment of an EU presence in Mogadishu. In the Central African Republic, another inter-service mission with EAS and Commission staff was sent in June 2013. The mission focused on the political, humanitarian and security aspects of the crisis and it identified the need for an urgent instrument for stability intervention with a view to strengthening the civilian security forces through a wider security sector reform. 
Beyond the crisis response work, the department is also engaged in building partnerships with regional organizations around the globe so as to enhance mutual crisis preparedness. As the world is facing more and more complex, multidimensional crises and emergencies, the EU remains committed to enhancing its cooperation with international and regional partners in the field of crisis response. Up until now, several EAS missions have been carried out to a number of regional organizations, among which the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the League of Arab States and the Organization of American States. Finally, the Crisis Response Department is also working to enhance EU delegations' capabilities to respond to emergency situations. This has practically implied the organization of tabletop crisis response exercises in selected delegations, up to now Beijing and Beirut, with a view to understand which actions should be implemented in order to improve the emergency response preparedness of the delegations. Such exercises, which include the participation of local member states' embassies, have a strong consular component addressing evacuation operations and assistance to non-represented EU citizens. By means of these different lines of action, the EEAS Crisis Response Department is actively engaged in enhancing the EU capacity to respond to crises. In the current context, with an increasing number of complex crises all over the world, it is imperative to strive for a more coherent and integrated approach to crisis response and stabilization. Obviously, a more coherent and integrated approach in close collaboration with the 28 member states. Especially when we are on the ground working with our implementing partners, it becomes clear that the European Union needs to be more than a donor. It needs to be an actor, a doer.